Welcome to the series of lessons that explore the basics of sketching and covers a typical workflow when creating your sketch from scratch before turning it into a 3D model. To access the sketch environment, you first need to select the Create Sketch command from the toolbar and a plane to sketch on. If you have existing bodies in your design, then you can also select a face to sketch off, although for now, we use the XZ plane. After I click on the selected plane, you will notice that the environment automatically aligns to the same plane. You can disable this by simply unchecking the Auto Look At Sketch option under the design header in your preferences. Heading back to the sketch environment, you may notice that the UI has changed compared to the default solid environment we were first met with, and is confirmed by the highlighted sketch tab at the top. Here we have drop downs that focus on sketching features and tools, and follows a typical sketching workflow, where you first create your base outline shape, before modifying it, until finally constraining it. The first section, the create section, is where you can find your basic shapes, including lines, circles, and text, to create your base sketch. You will also notice we have the mirror and pattern commands, the project command, and the dimensioning tool here. Once you have your base sketch in place, you may then look to modify it using tools such as fillet, trim, or offset, for example. And after creating and modifying your base outline sketch, you would then look to fully constrain it to maintain complete control over your design and avoid unwanted errors. Finally, on the right hand side, you'll see the sketch palette, which offers you additional sketch tools to help with your workflow, some of which we'll look at in this series. Now that you have an understanding of the sketching UI, I'm going to show you how you can create some basic shapes and some considerations when doing so. Let's start by creating a simple line. You can either left click on the line command from the toolbar, use the shortcut L button on your keyboard, use the shortcut S button to search for the command, or by right clicking on the canvas to access a command from the marking menu. Once the command has been selected, Fusion asks you to place the first point. You can place the first point anywhere on the canvas, although for now, I would suggest using the origin as your starting point by hovering near to it, waiting for it to snap, then left clicking to place. Once placed, drag this line away from the origin. You will see a preview of the line appear, as well as two dialog boxes that let you define the length, an angle, if already known. Also, if you drag this line to the X or Z axes, you'll see it snap to the respective axis. Both dialog boxes and automatic snapping are providing quick ways to apply constraints and dimensions to your sketch to avoid manually doing them at a later date. Again, we'll touch on this in a bit more detail in the next video. Now, create a line that does not snap to the horizontal or vertical at any length and angle, by left clicking once you have your position. After you place the second point, you can drag the line out to continue and create more lines. Notice how you can also snap to other sketch features, such as this midpoint here, or creating a perpendicular line. We'll leave this as a single line for now, so click on the green check mark to confirm. You are still in the create line mode, so to end it, simply press escape or enter on your keyboard. At the moment, this sketch is not fully defined, meaning we can move it around and change its length simply by dragging by its endpoint. To show you an example of constraints, as we snapped to and selected the origin for the starting position, an automatic constraint was placed meaning this start point is locked in place. As such, 
We cannot move it as we have done so with the endpoint. If I left click on this start point, you can see the relative constraint symbol. And if I delete this to remove the constraint, this is now free to move. To get this back, we can simply drag it back to the origin and release the mouse button after you see it snap. I might also want to add features to this sketch, as we can't do much with a single line. Go ahead and select the center diameter circle feature from the toolbar, then snap to the endpoint of our line, and drag out before left clicking to create your circle. Similar to before, I can adjust the diameter by clicking and dragging on the edge. Although when I go to move it from its center point, you will notice the line also moves with it. As before, an automatic constraint was applied, meaning where one goes, so does the other. Again, we can always delete this by selecting it and pressing delete on your keyboard or through the right click marking menu if needed. Moving on, before you can extrude to a 3D shape, your sketch must be a closed profile, meaning there are no gaps in the perimeter profile, and is indicated by the light blue shading, as you can see with this circle. For instance, here I am attempting to create a surrounding box using the line command, although I've missed placing the last point with the first. I can simply click on one vertex and snap it to another, creating that constraint and profile as indicated by the light blue shading. We can now extrude this to a 3D shape. Now you have a bit more of an understanding of the sketching UI and the tools that sit within, let's take a look at how we might put these and some of the other modified tools into practice. In this example, I want to design a simple camera case, but first, I need to design the camera itself as a reference model. Open up a new design, create a new component from the drop down, then rename it something more appropriate. Make sure this component is activated by checking the box to the right, then start a new sketch on the XZ plane. Before we start sketching, I'd like to examine what the most simplest form is we can achieve, then think about applying the details later. Here I have a reference sketch, and I can see the most simplest form for our camera is split up into two basic bodies, the camera and the main body. I'm looking to create a 2D sketch, and in this case, I can see the two profiles for the main body and the camera that will form our base sketch for subsequent extrusion. With Fusion, you can extrude multiple 3D features from just one sketch, and in this case, I can see both our main body and camera profiles can sit on one single 2D sketch profile, making our lives a little easier. Once I have these shapes in mind, go and create a two-point rectangle to a rough dimension that will be our main body profile by left-clicking on the start point then left clicking once more for the end point. Once placed, you will notice the vertical and horizontal constraints have been automatically applied. Now, using the line command again, go ahead and create the camera sketch profile to approximately represent the camera by snapping to the lines. Place it just above this automatic midpoint snapping here, so we are not constrained to the midpoint of this line. We have our base sketch in position, so we can now look at the next step and modifying this by applying some fillets. I'd like to note here, that in general, you may prefer applying fillets using the 3D command instead, 
as you can find these easier to assign and manage across multiple components and more complex designs. Once you become more familiar with Fusion, you'll find a method that best works for you, although for now, we'll apply these as 2D sketch features. Go ahead and select the fillet command from the toolbar, and we can either select two adjacent lines or the connecting point between these lines. You will see a preview of the fillet in red, and after you click, you will be asked to enter the dimension. Put in a value, press enter, and you will see this fillet and dimension has been applied. We can always change this value by double clicking on the dimension and entering your updated value. For now, press undo or Ctrl Z to get this back to the original dimension. You will notice that we have other fillets to create as well. So right click to open the marking menu and let's repeat this command. I'll go and select another corner, although this time, after clicking on the first, instead go ahead and click on the other corners as highlighted here. You can see we stay in the fillet command and everything we select has the same fillet radius to the first selected as an automatic equal constraint was applied. I think 10mm is a bit too big for these, so I'll enter 5mm instead, and due to the equal constraint, you can see how those we just selected all update to the same dimension. We still have this 10mm fillet, as there is currently no relationship between them. We'll create an equal or matching dimension at a later date. For now, just double click on the dimension and enter 5mm. Now, we have two remaining fillets for the camera profile, although if I repeat the fillet command, you will notice that some of the automatically applied constraints are now lost. Fusion cannot establish how to repair these, as we have created a feature that has multiple points we could connect to. In this case, open up the line command again, and repair these gaps using the automatic snapping. Once finished, you should see the two profiles as indicated by the light blue shading. Finally, you might think this looks a bit cluttered with all the constraints and dimensions on your screen. You can hide these by unchecking the respective options in the sketch palette to the right to make your workspace a little cleaner. That covers everything on some of the basics of sketching. In the next one, We'll take a further look at constraints and dimensioning to fully define your sketch. Thanks for watching.